Greater Boston is home to a thriving food scene. But one thing it does not have is a single Michelin star rated restaurant. And if you've seen Emily in Paris or The Bear, you know that is a really big deal. We're gonna get a star. For some, this is surprising. I was sure there were. I live in Quincy. We've got a lot of really good spots like Rabato. Mistral, Ostra. For some reason, I kind of thought Oya was one. As for why we've been shut out when it comes to those coveted stars, it's not necessarily because our food scene isn't up to snuff. But let's start at the start. How did a French tire company become the name in dining excellence? The Michelin Guide was launched in 1900 by brothers Andre and Edward Michelin, the tire manufacturers. It was a very smart marketing technique to get people to drive to restaurants using their cars and Michelin tires. Which would inevitably need to be replaced. The Michelin brothers recruited a team of mystery restaurant inspectors, as they're called today, to visit and review restaurants anonymously. In 1926, they began awarding stars to exceptional fine dining establishments. You know, restaurant communities have always kind of looked to France to see what to do, and that's where a lot of back of the house kitchen brigade systems come from and kitchen terms, so the Michelin Guide kind of became the standard. In 2005, they came to the U.S. for the first time with a guide for New York City, followed by places like Chicago and Washington, D.C., but they have not launched a guide for Boston. Having a Michelin Guide in Massachusetts would be awesome. Why is that one such a big deal? Oh, it's the highest ranking system that you can get in the States. I do think Michelin just continues to carry a really good weight of esteem for folks. We're a destination restaurant, but we'll never be in the guide because we're just not in a state that prioritizes culinary excellence in that way. So wait, why do the state's culinary priorities impact whether Boston gets a Michelin guide? Here's where it gets interesting. Their model has changed significantly um, since the early days where they really just came in and picked a city and did the reviews and created the guide, but now they have gone to what we call a pay to play model. It's not a well kept secret. And I think that's because, you know, tourism boards do have to release what they're spending money on. It's definitely not like some organic thing. It's very, very calculated when Michelin Guide comes to a new city. Now, we reached out to Michelin and they said that a city needs to have enough high quality cuisine to even be considered for a guide. But they also confirmed that marketing dollars are often a part of the process. Cities like Atlanta and states like Colorado and Florida have ponied up the money in recent years. So is it time that we do the same? Would it be worth it? And crucially, worth it for who? I think it's a big, big missed opportunity financially on, on all sides. I think that Boston and Massachusetts probably doesn't get enough credit as interesting as the food scene has become and developed over the last number of years. Not having it doesn't exactly attract or retain talent. They're going to Chicago, they're going to Atlanta, Miami, New York. 90 cents to 95 cents of every dollar that goes into a restaurant actually goes right back out the door into the local economy. This makes or breaks careers. Getting a nomination and winning, as far as I have seen, that means that restaurant will survive longer than most restaurants. A lot of restaurants who do chase them never turn a profit. It's just a way for the chef to be able to get this thing that allows them to open up other projects. I no longer need a book to tell me that I'm doing a good job. I need the folks who I employ to tell me that, and I need the profit and loss statement to show that I'm doing that. I don't think my taste or my palate is what the Michelin star system is going for anyways. I've actually been more into kind of the approachable vibes these days. I feel like sometimes fine dining is kind of overrated and overpriced. Michelin has also, it seems like almost broadened out, first of all, what gets the stars. We just were in LA and there's a great little spot that's in a like food court that has a star and there was a line around the corner for it. There's also the Bib Gourmand, which points out some more casual places that are a little more affordable. And so it's not the stars, but it's restaurants that Michelin Guide says, these are delicious places to go. And like that is how that restaurant, or how the Michelin Guide should exist. It should let you know like, hey, this place is like, really good, but it's not gonna break the bank. And then they put the little $1 sign on there to show that it's like pretty cheap. It's weird that a tire company decides which restaurants are the best, but I think that any chef that's willing to like go for that extra mile and do something really like interesting, they deserve that recognition. It feels very Boston-y to be like, we don't need 
your validation or your star system. We love our food and if you love it, come visit. If you don't, don't. So yeah, I'm not surprised at all that Boston said forget it. <laughs> In 2022, a Boston Eater article made it clear that Boston tourism officials were not going to pay to play. However, that could be changing. I've been convinced that, yeah, there are different sections in the guide that allow all different types of restaurants to be featured. We've had conversations with Michelin about the potential of Boston and this region becoming part of their portfolio, and those talks are ongoing. I've learned a lot uh, from both Michelin and from our chef community over the past couple of years since those first Eater articles came out, particularly about the breadth of the guide and what they do and don't include. And it's really opened my mind to, you know, what the possibilities could be. So it's seems like a Michelin guide for Boston could be a real possibility in the future. And I would argue we shouldn't even have to pay, and I'll tell you why. Now, stick with me for a second. The whole thing that made Michelin tires possible in the first place was a process called vulcanization, where you add sulfur to rubber. Now, that was discovered and developed by Charles Goodyear right here in Woburn, Massachusetts. So, you know, you kind of owe us Michelin.